um, I started to talk a, li a little bit about that. And th these handouts are, there's been a couple adjustments, nothing major, so. This is, so this is like well done out for us. Yeah, there's a lot of really good stuff on there. Um, <laughs> I'm just like beginning to think, oh, this is fabulous, thank you. Folks. Yes, so okay, so I wanted right to, I know you're all here at podcast, podcast, so we all know and believe that social media works. Um, and I was really reminded of, I'm sorry? Find out more. Yes, that's right. So even if you just believe it works, you know, sometimes you, the effort, people maybe sometimes say, the effort isn't worth the work that it takes to put over. So this was just a very personal experience that I had this week about social media working. I have some in-laws up in Buffalo, and if it wasn't for Facebook, we wouldn't have known that they were in that crazy snow band and we wouldn't have known that they needed help, and we wouldn't have known um, that there was a place that you could post your address and have people come and dig you out if you were elderly or sick, and we wouldn't have known that they actually were dug out and safe. So this is just, these are two pictures that came up on my newsfeed and got to the point where I couldn't tell the difference between news photos and my family's photos. So without that connection on Facebook, that would have been a complete void of information. So. Um, social media definitely does work. I use it on a regular basis on a personal level, simply to communicate to companies about customer service issues, or um, we go to a restaurant, we have a really great meal, I always make sure I post on there. So I believe social media works, um, personally and professionally. So that's why I wanted to have this session, because I'm not a social media expert. I'm an English major by, uh, an MBA by trade, right? So. And my career has taken me to a very strange place. I never would have expected it. Um, so I wanted to make a session for people that are in big companies. That's me. I'm in a big company, and I manage a handful of products. But we have a social media manager, and it's not me. We have a social media manager, a digital marketing manager. We have a video manager. We have all these other people that are experts, but it isn't me. So, um, this section really is geared for anybody who believes social media can help, but uh, there's always an excuse, right? Uh, I will go over a few of those later, but maybe it won't work. There's a fear of maybe it won't work. Why would I waste so much time and effort if it doesn't work? So don't worry, I'm not a social media expert either. I'm really not. So I'm a personal user of social media. I've seen it work. Um, I've had the privilege of working under Chad Herman, who's currently at Kids Plus Pediatrics who uh, really shaped me and trained me on how to um, make social media work for, for me. Sorry to the people at home, I'm gonna <laughs> step away from the camera. Um. Hi everyone. Um, real quick recap. If you're not a social media expert, you're in the right place. Neither am I. So just a few things about me. Um, that's my Twitter name, my Twitter handle, this is EPGH. Um, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a hockey fan, I'm a, I love desserts. Um, but my day job is University Program Developer at SAE International. SAE is formerly the Society of Automotive Engineers. Um, I'm not an engineer, I never expected to find myself in this position. Uh, but Specifically, day to day, I am responsible for Formula SAE, Baja SAE, and SAE Air Design Social Media. So what does that mean? So I work with college students who have spent a year building something that moves, and it typically is a senior design project or something like that, and then they come to our events and they compete. So we register our teams in October, and then in the spring semester, they come and compete. So this is our Formula SAE, um, project that's our Baja SAE. They're literally roll cages on wheels, um, and this is the Aero Design. So when I came into my position a year and a half ago, my company, my, my brands, our brand, had no social media whatsoever, and we were dealing with college students. They were blowing us out of the water in terms of information. A year and a half in, they're still blowing us out of the water. Their hand, their Facebook pages are so much more engaged than where we are, because the reality is this really is only 10% of my job, and there are other program manager, uh, management responsibilities that we have with them. So I knew there was a way that we had to build social media and then 
you know, of course all the fear comes in, right? So 10% of my job, how am I gonna possibly make that work? So these are all the different excuses I started to, that popped in my head, right? I don't know where to start. I don't know which networks to use. I don't know how, what to post. I don't have the time. That's a huge one for tiny businesses and for small businesses. I don't know what to do if someone complains. This is a really big one, right? How do you handle that? How do you mitigate that? I don't even know why someone would follow me on social media. That's a big one too. We tend to think of ourselves as um, boring and the reality is you have customers and, and followers for a reason. Uh, how do I know if it's working? And I don't know, I have a Facebook page, but I don't know what to do next. I can post, but what's next? So um, in my case, there was a social media manager that I mentioned before. Um, and there were no set policies, but there was still a gatekeeper that I needed to get my project passed. So we created a very simple plan, a who, what, why, where, when, and all that stuff of why we needed social media. And it took a few months to get approved, but it was approved because our plan, you know, we justified our need. There's no, um, it's very hard to argue against the power of social media, uh, especially to the social media manager. So, um, right, so you have to make sure you're following any rules that are set up if you're working within a corporation. Any of the content rules, I had a very uh, interesting moment last December when we posted a stocking picture, like Christmas stockings, um, that had all of our brands on it. So we have seven, I didn't mention three, but we have uh, seven different brands. Well, it was taken down immediately, within an hour of this. And it wasn't by me. So our social media manager had seen it and they was decided that was too uh, religious of content for us to have there on a page that for a global company. So again, there was no necessary there wasn't necessarily a policy in place that that needed to be taken down or that it was against the policy, but it was taken down nonetheless. So follow the rules. Um, the maintenance, if my social media manager requested that I send her reports on a regular basis, send her reports. Um, I'm lucky in that mine doesn't, uh, but we still do the reports for our internal staff. So who already has social media set up that you're using? Just to just have Facebook and LinkedIn. Just Facebook and LinkedIn. Okay, so we have a good mix. Um, so I get this question a lot. Well, Facebook's the biggest network, right? There's in their packet there is a list of uh, what the monthly users are for all for the top ten, I think, most popular social networking sites. Facebook is obviously the biggest. People are using it for personal and professional reasons, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's where your business is. Um, we happen to use Facebook mostly. Uh, we cross pollinate over to Twitter, but on site when we're at our competitions, we use Twitter almost exclusively. Um, and our teams seem to have made that transition with us, interestingly. Um, we weren't sure how that was gonna go the first year, but they seem to have jumped right on. Um, yeah, there's ones you've never even heard of on that list. I, <laughs> I stopped at 10 because I didn't know 11 through 15. Yeah, and millions. Yes, that's right. So, Worldwide, obviously. Yeah. Okay. So the people are there, right? Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If you have a visual uh, product, like I think of Burgatory every time I think of Instagram. A picture of a burger of the day is going to get so much more play than a description of the burger of the day. And you can, I'm sure that they, when they go back to their analytics, it's night and day. Um, Pinterest, if you're selling something that's a product for moms, if you have an Etsy shop, that should be on Pinterest just as much as it is. It should be on Etsy or Facebook. Um, YouTube, if you're creating any kind of video content, that's what um, I just wanted to include this because, like I mentioned with our events, uh, we are very busy on site. Um, I am spending maybe an hour of the 12 hour chunk of the day on social media, tweeting or whatever, getting content. When you have that sort of role, when you're not the social media person, and you're doing an event, trust your people. Um, so, but to do that, you need to make sure you're giving them some something to work with. So, like I said, we use Twitter for that. And 
it's not all or nothing, right? So you don't have to do all of these. In fact, you should not do all of these. You will go crazy, especially if you're just starting out. So the goal is just to get in, start moving, and you'll, you'll fumble your way through the first few months, but you'll figure it out. You'll know where your people are. You'll see where you're getting the most play. Um, there are tons of social media 101 um, pod camp videos on the YouTube channel. They also had them earlier today. I'm not gonna talk about how to post on these different things or why you would choose each one of these, but uh, I suggest going back to the YouTube channel to really look at uh, those 101 and 201 sessions that really plow through some of this stuff. It's really good stuff. Um, next one was, I don't know what to post. And I'm gonna reiterate probably what they say in every 101 session. Content is king. You can post, post all kinds of things. You can post your thoughts. You can post photos. You can post videos. Polls, we do this all the time. Uh, announcements, we play up our announcements. An announcement's good for at least three different posts. Uh, a, a what's coming, the announcement, and a step back and you know revisit in case you missed it sort of thing. Frequently asked questions. Um, the frequently asked questions is a big one for us. 10% of my job is social media, but I don't know, 40% of my time is spent answering email questions, the same email questions over and over and over again. So when I see a question come in more than twice, it immediately gets posted as a frequently asked question on our social media. Um, there, it's all about hacking your your content to make it work for you, especially if you're in a tiny or a small business. This is one of those places where the fear pops in. Like, why would anyone want to follow me? I don't understand that. Even if you're a small business or a tiny business, you have a product, but that doesn't mean that you're convinced that um, people care about what you're going to post. People opt into your social media. They're, you're not forcing that on them. You're not standing on the street corner or yelling at them. They are choosing to go to your Facebook page, cho choosing to go to your Twitter feed. Um, something that might seem mundane to you is something that's interesting to them. You know, so if you follow, you know, the, the cliche is the lunch picture, right? What people ate for lunch. Well, that matters if you know someone who works downtown at a digital marketing firm and you, they're posting what they had for lunch at this new restaurant downtown. Well, it's all part of the same, you know, um, what people like, or what they like about you is also what they want to see. So, um, the next excuse I always hear, this is probably the biggest one, I don't have the time. No one has the time unless you're boss. You know, if you, if you have the time, then you work in a digital marketing firm. That's the reality of it. So, for small businesses and tiny businesses, it's all about hacking your process. It's all about cross-pollinating. If you post something on Twitter, it should be posting on Facebook. Maybe not necessarily automatically, um, but if you're creating content, that content should be used across, especially when you're getting out, when you're starting out uh, and getting started, you have this much time, so you need to maximize that time and that effort. Um, I personally use Hootsuite. There are a couple of them um, that you can use, and, and you can Google this. There are tons and tons of resources out there about which one to use for, for what purpose. But Hootsuite allows me to see all three of my brands at once in post, as we sometimes do have announcements across all three brands at once. Um, so Hootsuite is a tool that will allow you to post as well as see all of the content you can your home, your news feed, you can see your mentions, you can see your shares, you can see search if you're looking for a particular keyword that's relevant to you or your business, you can watch that happening. It's also really good for live events. Uh, we use it, we always set out, at our events we always set out a hashtag and I can watch that hashtag within Hootsuite the whole time without you know going in and searching for it every single time. So look that one up. Um, there's also been a few Hootsuite sessions that are on the PodCamp YouTube channel that are really good. Crowdsource content, this is a huge one. I posted, or I tweeted earlier today that um, 
inflow, sitting in another session, that crowdsourced content is underrated. My job on Sunday at the Baja events, which are the rule cage on wheels, is to count the number of times cars were ripped. That is my job. I have a spreadsheet and I sit in front of a computer in a car and count the number of times a car was ripped. For the record, it is three before you get kicked out. So um, it's a constant thing that I'm doing. I have no time to post. I literally do not look at social media during that entire four hour endurance race. So I rely on my teams that are out there tweeting the standings, tweeting what's going on, tweeting about the event to create content. And I have people who watch and if there's good stuff, we retweet it. But the reality is social media is my <coughs> job during that time and I need to find other ways to get that content out there. It's the biggest day of our event. So I can't just let it go blank. So I rely heavily on our team to do it. And like I said, they're doing a better job of it anyways than we are. So um, auto posting. So it is possible to auto post and sometimes it makes sense. I had a tweet sent out from my personal account today at 10 minutes before the session to remind people about the session. Um, but every single time something tragic happens in the world, I see really, really bad posts from companies that had auto posted and they had scheduled it ahead of time. Um, and it just looks really insensitive and really tacky. And it's just something to be aware of. Um, there's a benefit to it, certainly if I'm flying back from a competition and there's a deadline or something that happens while I'm on the plane, it makes sense to auto post that. But just be aware that it can get really sticky. You can do searches about companies that really believe it is, in this case, um, having really bad uh, posts during hurricanes and that sort of thing. So, um, being a content search. So, another one is I don't know how to handle negative feedback. This is a very scary one because you don't know what other people are to say, create, do to your page. Sure, you can block them out from contacting you or posting or anything like that, but the, that's not what social media is about. Social media is about being social and it's about uh, engaging with people, even if they have a bad experience. I, when I, in a previous world of mine, I worked for Kids Plus Pediatrics. And not to get political, but Kids Plus is a pediatric firm or a pediatric company that believes that all their children, all the, the kids in their practice need to be vaccinated. They don't accept anybody, any patients who are not going to be vaccinated. So for what that's worth, you can imagine what Facebook looks like come time when we post something about vaccines. And there's only been one person ever banned from Kids Plus Facebook page, and it was not for vaccines. And they, it's all about simply um, acknowledging people's opinions. If they had a really bad experience at your restaurant, it is not beneficial for you to tell them, you know, it is what it is. Right? You know, obviously you're not going to say that, but you you have to. Um, You have to acknowledge that people have a bad experience. It's going to happen in every business, right? So there's a couple ways that, that you can work around this. Trust your people. Trust your other people, your other fans, to see that and respond, right? Oh, I've never had a bad experience with the waffles. That really sucks. Um, white nights are really great. You have no idea how many fans you have until someone starts to, to hammer your business online. Um, use the negative feedback to your advantage. You know, if for example, if I, um, some, one of my teams has a really bad experience on my registration, I'm gonna keep track of that bad experience. I track that every year and we, next year we work to, to mitigate those specific negative feedbacks. Every year we try to make things better. So keep a log of that. Maybe you'll find out that maybe it's not an isolated incident and you really need to go back and check, uh, you know, a particular product manufacturing or something like that. Don't delete the negative posts. This is really, really bad. And big companies get uh, hammered for this all the time. It is the internet. Everything is trackable at this point. There are screen caps. Uh, it's very simple to do a screen cap. It's very simple to create a blog post that you deleted this post. And then you get into a war 
with you. Don't do it. Google will always win. Um, and be flexible, adjust if necessary. When something's not working, you adjust. For example, um, I'm gonna talk later about a couple of my social media heroes, but one of them is Whole30, which Whole30 is this uh, particular way of, of eating. So I won't get into that, but it's, it's, about, it's about eating real food. And um, a couple of weeks ago, they posted this post, or they posted something about, do you think it's immoral to send kind of junk food to soldiers overseas? Well, they got a ton of negative feedback about uh, politicizing, I mean, everything. It just opened up a whole floodgate of um, opinions that people just thought they were posting content that was inappropriate, unnecessary, not useful. So they came out and they apologized. You know, we're sorry, we tried to go this route, you guys didn't like it, we're okay with that, we're moving on, we're creating something else. And you can't find that post now, so. Um, you know, they, they did get rid of it because it just turned into such a, a hot mess and uh, it wasn't what their like purpose. Their original, not their yes. apology, but their Correct, original. yes. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I don't know why I even use social media. One of the things that we decided to do as soon as we got the green light for our social media was we needed to know our intention. We're in a company of 300 people and Every one of them wants to get to the young professional crowd, right? That's the buzz buzzword. Well, we have 10,000 of them on our Facebook page. If you post anything to the young professionals, it was going to be a floodgate. So we made a mission statement about what was important to us. And it is as simple, our mission statement is as simple as we will post anything that benefits our students' education or career. So if we have, for example, we just had an outside company partner with our company about for a video contest that allows teams to win up to five thousand dollars. Well, that's a huge amount of money for our teams to be able to win simply for posting a video. So even though it was something that wasn't our project, it wasn't one of our sponsors, we still made that effort and that push to the, for our students' purposes um, in their benefit. And you know, three of our teams won eight thousand dollars. That's Awesome. So know your intentions. It's okay to simply want to sell more products. That's an okay goal. Uh, if you're in business to make money, so don't shy away from that being your intention. Uh, it's okay not to have anything to sell. Our events sell out in under 10 minutes every single year. We make like a million dollars in one day, which may not be big for you know huge corporations, but for us it is that we sell out every one of our slots for our major events. I don't have anything to sell the rest of the year. And even if I did nothing on social media, they would still continue to sell it. So our purpose um, is truly about you know getting information out to our team. Gaining followers has no value if you aren't engaging. You can have 10,000 followers, you can have a million followers, but if you aren't posting anything, there's no value to that. Uh, so gaining followers as well, so it is a goal, but it's not necessarily your true goal, it's, it's a simple goal. So it's okay for your attention to be making your life easier. My goal for social media is to make my inbox on Monday morning smaller of the same questions that I'm answering over and over and over again. Um, that's okay. It's a selfish goal, but it's okay of a goal. Uh, how do I know if it's working? This was a really important one because it was something I didn't, I had no experience in doing prior um, to when I started the SAE Facebook pages. You want to show some data, even if it's just yourself. I could never show a report to anybody that I work with, and they wouldn't necessarily care. They may ask me once in a while how many followers we have. But even if it's to yourself, it's important to see something. Um, keep your data simple. In the handout, um, I think it's one of the last ones, last pages. It is last. This is an example of what we present to our team. It's very simple. Total likes, new likes, total posts, um, the, the page likes, bar graph. It's important to us to know our international following, so you'll see some of the, the regional information, how many countries we have fans from, um, the young professional stat is on here, as I mentioned, it's very important at this point to us. And then I include 
for my teammates, you know, what are top five things Facebook posts like? It can be that simple. Facebook gives you all of this information. Uh, Twitter is a little more difficult to get, but you can get it. So Facebook Insights are it's there for you. You just need to pull it out. I was just in the previous session, the nonprofit session, and she has this very she showed this very simple picture. I mean graphic from the insights that was what type of post is her most popular? Text, link, or photo. And that's such a, there's so much power in something that simple to know where your engagement is coming from. Look for anomalies. Uh, when I look at my bar graphs, I'm looking for where things shoot up, where things drop. Uh, around our events, obviously our mentions and that sort of thing skyrocket. Uh, but we had this one really weird one in the middle of January. Well, students aren't even back in school in the middle of January. So I went back and looked, and it was this ridiculous post that my 75-year-old boss asked me to post about what music people listen to in the show. And it was our most popular post of the year. Even though these engineering students are so you know, focused on their project, there is um, there's a reason they want they gravitated towards that post. And one of the main reasons was it was so easy to share. And once one person answered it on the team, the other people want to answer it on the team. So all of a sudden, it, it exponentially grew. Uh, establish goals in response to the data. So if you're looking at this data and you realize that those kinds of posts, that music in the shop post, did so well, maybe teams are not, they, they're looking for an outlet on our social media of things that maybe aren't so technical and aren't so driven by their project. They're still relevant in a way, but maybe there's more to your, your customers than what your product is. So establish goals. Think about what kind of other, what kind of posts you can create that are, um, should have historical popularity. And this is, use standard mm, social media metrics, right? So all this stuff, this is all standard stuff simple stuff, but there also could be very specific to your product metrics. Ours, for example, is the sellout time, right? We went from, um, last year we, our sellout times were around 20 minutes. And this year, we sold out events we've never sold out before. And it's because, of course I can't never prove this to my bosses, um, but it's because of social media. We now can create that urge for people to register. They know, have the information on where to register. Uh, they have the how-to videos on how to register. So there's some, there could be some specific metrics to your uh, product or service that makes sense. And the biggest way to know if it's working, yeah, you have a question? Oh, I was just going to ask, what, how do you, where do you go to, to access your, your analytics? So, on Facebook, are you on Facebook? Is that what you're using right now? Well, I, I'm you're just up in the air. Okay, so Facebook has an insights uh, tab that gives you a ton of information. Insights. Insights. Yep, it's right on the page. Uh, when you have a Facebook page, it's right on the top there. You can see it. And there are in on the Pod Camp YouTube channel, there are some some insights um, sessions from the past that are really really good. Um, the one that comes to mind is the Katie Boyko, 10 reports your boss will love. She does go over some of the Facebook insights. I definitely recommend watching that one. Katie, Katie Boyko, B A, no, B O J T K O, I think. Um, but it's called 10 reports your boss, boss will love. T K O, I think. <laughs> um, and she, she goes in depth on how to get some of that data. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Twitter's a little harder. We use Hootsuite to get ours very basic, simple stuff, but we also pay for it. Um, but you can get some free analytics on there too, from Twitter, especially if you're just looking for the basics. Um, the biggest way to know if it's working is if you ask your fans. Your fans will certainly tell you if things are going south or, you know, like they did with Whole30. Um, or if you start to hear through the grapevine that people are finding you through social media, that's also a really good indication. Um, the, the most clear way I found to know if it's working for us was uh, I received an email from customer service 
of a student that was asking for a payment deadline. We had a, a, a deadline for payments and they were asking to see if they can get an extension. It was the third question I had seen come in that day, which doesn't seem like a lot, but immediately I got on social media and I said, there's gonna be no extensions for deadlines. Before I could even walk over to that customer service um, representative, who, I don't know, three cubes over, to tell him that, he had already written, responded to the student saying there was gonna be no, as per this tweet, there was gonna be no extensions. So he was actually following us as a customer service rep for our company to get the date, the information that he knew he was gonna inevitably ask by other, other students, or students, or students, customers. So I knew that it was working at that point, and that was uh, really cool to see. So this is a little more in depth than some of this stuff, um, but this is kind of where I've taken our reports recently, was this Facebook engagement. Um, this is all, all stats here you can find on the Facebook analytics. We use Facebook the most, so that's why I'm talking about Facebook right now. But basically Facebook engagement is how many people do something with your post divided by the number of eyeballs that see your post. Um, like I said, all available within analytics, but this is our engagement. Um, so, when I looked, just started doing research on the engagement uh, formula, I wanted to know, okay, so what's the benchmark, right? What's the industry benchmark? This line right here is the industry benchmark. It's at 1%. If 1% of your, the people that see your post engage, you're doing okay. That's the standard. This is ours. So, um, I would imagine that, if, you know, on a big brand, if you get, if Old Davey gets 1% of their, uh, Facebook fans to engage with their posts, like, comment, share, uh, they're doing okay. As you can see, we have a very engaged group. I mean, that is, uh, this This is a good example of the anomalies that I was talking about earlier. So this right here, we asked our students to uh, tell us why they were thankful for whatever the program was, that, for Baja or Formula or whatever. And we put them all on these little graphics and posted them all day during Thanksgiving last year. And you can see that was 30% engagement on that day. That's pretty good. Uh, we were really happy with that and, and kind of surprised. We didn't expect that at all. But again, that was a post that was not technical and it wasn't geared towards their projects necessarily. A lot of them gave, you know, soft skills like I became a better project manager because of programming. Got a girlfriend because of organizing. <laughs> like these really silly things that um, were a break from what they're used to doing. So this is we had like half people that have Facebook pages or social media and they just didn't know what to do next. So I mentioned this a little earlier. Develop a content mission statement. How are you going to determine what content is posted? How are you going to determine which is a priority? We have a lot of time sensitive stuff and it may pop up out of nowhere that it needs to go out of view. So how do you know which is gonna be the priority? And this is my favorite one, because I'm in a company and I have all the boss who's been there for 30 years. How are we gonna handle favors that get called in? Oh, can you post this? Uh, it may have nothing to do with our students. But. So again, that very simple. We will post anything that benefits our students' career or education. So, um, Create a system that works for you. This is really important. Develop a calendar. It can be weekly, monthly, quarterly, whatever you're comfortable with posting. You don't have to post every day. It's okay not to post every day, especially when you're first getting started and you have a tiny business. If you post it every day, your other things are gonna fall. So there's um, Patty Swisher this morning posted, uh, talked about calendars a lot. And one thing she said, which just resonated to me was, don't reinvent the wheel, right? A calendar is a calendar. It's just a way to organize the information. And in the packet, I do have a couple uh, calendars that are, I think I did a weekly one, very simple, right? And then I did a monthly one. They're pretty simple. I literally just jot things on a big piece of 11 by 17 paper. I, if you're a digital person, you have a, a, calendar, a Google calendar. You can color code and everything. So. Build in your business natural schedule. Our schedule, we run pretty much October to the end of the competition, whether that's in May or June. Uh, but we 
have a natural, we do this. And then when we hit our competition season, we die off. Students are at home, they're not on Facebook as much during the summer. And so I don't put a ton of effort into those times. Sometimes we'll post you know, some announcements that's been scheduled for the upcoming year, the rules release, that sort of thing. But we don't focus, we don't waste energy. I mean, the month of December, students are away, they're not at school, they're busy, they're doing stuff. So again, we, we actually shut down our social media for two weeks. We post out there that we're shutting down for two weeks, and so I don't post anything. Now I still monitor, and when questions come in, I still answer questions and that sort of thing, but no reason to kill yourself if you know your people aren't there. Maybe you have a really busy schedule. I would imagine the CSA social medias are really busy when that sign up time is happening. And maybe even through CSA season, uh, where they're answering some customer service questions. So just know your business and natural schedule. Hold a meeting with your team. If you have a team, hold a meeting with them. This is what I did. I was the only one who knew anything about social media, even as really a personal user in my team when we started. So I held a kickoff meeting where we talked about how this process was gonna happen and what we were going to do. How I was gonna collect their information. Uh, if they had a suggestion, we, uh, uh, I had a calendar that they could look at at any point and see what was gonna be posted that next week for their brand. Um, establish how new ideas are logged and filled into the calendar. It could be as simple as a piece of paper on the wall where you just pick something and you walk up and jot it down. Engage your team, if you have a team, engage them to come up with content ideas. Uh, I am a big believer in one voice, so if you are the designated poster, even though you may have a team of five, and they may have access to it in case people on vacation or something, I recommend only one person being the one who responds. Um, when I was at Kids Plus, we would, people would obviously ask questions of the pediatricians. And I'll never forget one of the owners of the practices getting one of her, her posts deleted because she responded to a person on her personal account, and it was deleted by the uh, the one the person who ran the social media. Group. Well, she apologized. She was very apologetic. You know, she understood what she did. She first of all, you don't want people having personal accounts. You don't want your patients having access to your personal account. And um, you know, one voice. You don't want to give different information to this question, even though it's a similar question about a different answer. So. Um, this is kind of more of an advanced thing, but I, when I sat down to, to do this session, I couldn't help but think of the, the different brands that I really love to watch as a social media person. Uh, this is one of them, right? So this is Kids Plus, like I mentioned. They developed this uh, very, as soon as I see one of these in my newsfeed, I know exactly who it belongs to, even though they're all very different, right? So this is a for a class, this is just fun, that one was for their anniversary, and that one was to launch, uh, to announce a new feature that they had where people could auto-pay their, um, their bills and that sort of thing. So they've kind of taken this green, red, purple, yellow, blue thing, and that's their logo, but they've also pulled it through the rest of the year. Um, so find your niche, right? So if you're finding that you're wasting your time on Twitter and people aren't engaging, stop doing Twitter. Find your people, find your, they're on Pinterest. Go on Pinterest, focus on Pinterest. Uh, if people really love pictures of your product, then post more pictures. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel. Expand your networks. When you're ready, start liking other pages, start engaging other you know, businesses that you're partnered with or businesses that uh, are down the street, right? So Southside is really good for this. There's how many bars and restaurants in, in Southside, but a lot of them are very friendly with one another, especially on social media. So that's definitely a way to gain some friends. Uh, keep it fresh. So change your cover photo regularly. It's recommended that you do this uh, a few times over the year, right? Even up to every, once every month. If you have the ability to do seasonal cover photos, do it because it's, it brings people back in. Uh, if they haven't been watching this so much. So find heroes. This is what, these are just a few of my heroes. Um, kids Plus, this is, obviously I used to work there, but uh, my kid doesn't go to Kids Plus Pediatrics anymore, but I still follow them on a regular basis. And one of the cool things that they do is every week they post a doctor's note. All the doctors in the practice are charged with writing, um, I don't know, 500 words about some topic. Uh, 
about you know asthma attacks or traveling with infants or some, something. It can be anything. They get to choose. All these things are indexed on their web page, and you know this this handles a business. Uh, it solves a business problem in that if I, as a mother, up at 3 a.m. And my child has a, my baby has a fever, and I don't know, I can't remember. I know some fever is okay, but what I don't know what that threshold is. Um, I can go on their website and get that information, and it saves me a nurse call, it saves me a night of worrying, it saves me a trip to the ER. Uh, so that's a really cool thing. If you have, if you're an expert, be the expert. Um, this next one is style exchange boutique. This is actually my cousin's, and she would probably die if she knew I was putting it up here. But she does this really cool thing where she she runs a, um, a consignment shop. So there's two business problems with a consignment shop. A, your customers don't know what you have until they get there. And B, even if they knew what you have, the chances of it being there by the time that they got, to your, got around to getting to your store, it might be gone. So whenever she gets in um, a couple of like items, she'll post a photo album. You know how four or five, six different products in it, and you can buy it now, right on the Facebook. All you have to do is sold. You have to type sold, and then she holds it for you. And you know, it's very cool to see. It's a way to keep her uh, business. It, she's taking her business to your house, right? So you can sit on your living room couch and buy things from her store, and you still have to go. And she'll ship it, but you can still go pick it up, whatever. But uh, that's a huge business problem. And she's on Facebook page. These, These are all Facebook, Facebook. yes. Yeah. Um, so the Whole30 I already talked about. One of the things about the Whole30 is, so with any food, diet, whatever, uh, can, this is unsustainable. There's no way I could ever do this. Real people don't eat like that. There's no way I could cook a gourmet meal every night, blah, blah, blah. So the way they've combated this is they've actually, um, and I just realized I added slides that have all these examples on here. So we're going to repeat this in a minute. <laughs> um, their fans are posting stuff on Instagram. They're posting stuff on Twitter. They're posting their experiences. And they share them on a regular basis. They share people's posts. They share people's graphics that they've made. They share people's recipes. That's really cool. Um, and this is one of my other ones is Honest Toddler. And any mom in the should be following. So Honest Toddler doesn't really have any product. It's just a mom who posts really, really, really funny stuff that, that her, you know, it's her, it's supposedly the toddler type thing. It's very fun. Uh, and really her business goal is just to keep mom honest about being a mom, right? They play with pop culture a ton. So this is an example of the doctor's note um, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, this is an example of her style change boutique, what they do. So basically just buy it now. Uh, she includes the prices down here on all of her pictures too, which is really cool. Um, this is the whole 30. Somebody else created this graphic. They did not create this graphic. Um, so they call them out by name or by Twitter handle, I guess. And then this is the Honest Toddler. So my favorite part of Honest Toddler is like they nail the hashtag usage and the over hashtag usage. In the so blessed hashtag, which is one of my favorites that uh, moms always post, right? So um, this is a picture that was making its rounds around uh, Facebook and Twitter a couple weeks ago, and then so they just put it up there and, and put their own little twist on it. It's very funny. Okay, so that's all I have um, for, for the slides. I just want to real quickly go through. Uh, this one, the, the handout that I put. So I, I thought about doing this in a workshop style, and I realized we have two minutes, and that's crazy. So I didn't. But this first page is just social media roadmap. This is basically an audit of where you are. What are you comfortable with? What do you still need to work on? If you need to create a social media content calendar, and you know that's something that's going to benefit you, go to Google and type in how to create a social media content calendar. There's so many resources out there. You may have to go through a few until you find it, um, but it's worth it. So selecting a network, I put, I, we already talked about this a little bit. Um, you'll see that Facebook is by far the, the biggest, but there's other ones out there that might be benefit your company. So this badge is of honor. 
Um, this is one that is kind of like a check mark, check list, really. You're going to have a first post. You're going to have a first like. You're going to have a, your first troll, right? That's going to happen. These are all just kind of like, you know, rites of passage that just to keep yourself honest and, and, and a little lighthearted but as you move through this really scary thing. Um, so that's just a fun one that I put in there. The weekly calendar we talked about, the monthly calendar we talked about, and annual cycles. Oh, I actually put this in here. Um, so that big block of dark text, that's our competition season. I know that I'm going to be traveling these days, so I need to be aware of that. December's you see, I scratched out the last two weeks because I know our students aren't watching. So this is just a in a annual calendar printed from Word that I would marked up um, to make it beneficial for me. And then the social media report, which we kind of addressed as well. So that's all I've got. <laughs> All of these things I learned by coming to PodCamp and following really smart people on social media and Twitter, and we have a lot of them here, and it's very cool to learn from them. Uh, I've sat in every session this morning, and I will tomorrow be in every session. So by no means am I an expert, and you don't have to be to have success with social media. If you're really, really just Yes. Yes. Um, and deciding what network to post and mm -hmm. thinking about launching an account and all that. Um, is there anyone in particular that you would recommend? You said you know follow certain people. Are there people that really are for YouTube posting? I mean that may be the way to go. But who would you recommend, or where who can you recommend to, to go to? Yes. So the first thing I would recommend is go to the hashtag PCPGH9 which is the hashtag for this event on Twitter, and follow everybody who's posting it. Uh, honestly, yes, like the person behind you. I don't know, he was a little snarky today, so I'm a little concerned about what Aww. he had to say about oh, okay. his session. What did uh, you say that was snarky? I can't remember what it was. I was like, ooh, that's tough. I don't know. Oh, no, no. Do you remember what it was? I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> But seriously, people, the, the people that are here today are really smart and they are fumbling their way through social media too, which is some people are experts and some people aren't. But so many of them are willing to answer your questions and willing to help you. Um, Katie Boyko, who I mentioned earlier, she's really smart too. She won, she was kind of someone who I watched as I was um, kind of coming into my own social media. And like I said, find this brand. It doesn't have to be in your sector. And so to follow these people, you need to create a Twitter account. Yes, I would recommend creating a Twitter account. Um, even if you don't ever post anything on your personal Twitter account. Okay. Um, my dad works in a job where he is managing a large area. And he's in a facilities role. Well, I was telling him about water main breaks and all this stuff that was relevant to his work that he knew nothing about. But he knew his the power went out or something, but I was able to trace it back to uh, a down telephone wire. Facebook's Twitter. And so he's now on Twitter and he uses it purely for that purpose of his job of finding out things that are happening in the city that sort of thing. So you don't have to ever post anything. You can just sit back and watch and learn. So that would be my first suggestion. Um, my other suggestion would be to find someone Maybe a direct competitor, maybe not. Maybe someone just in your industry, in your realm, uh, in your community, and follow them. See what they're doing. See what they're, what posts people are responding to. That sort of thing. Um, I think Facebook is the easiest, most accessible kind of social media, but it's not the only one. So, like I said, Pinterest is also really good at this point. Um, I can't. There was this one particular sweater that was being passed around Pinterest, you know, whatever it exploded. I know what this is, what that means. Yeah, and so I went to try to buy it for like a year and a half, but it was sold out every single time I tried to buy it. So, you know, social media has kind of made some of these small businesses. You see like the Shark Tank company, you know, they go on Shark Tank once and then they are just killing it because, yeah. even if they don't get funded, they're right. just killing it because social media allows you to connect with them. Justin Bieber won't discover not YouTube. Isn't that amazing? That's right. But, but it's interesting because like you didn't even list YouTube as one of the so yeah. forms of social media, but it is, right? Yep. 
Yeah, it definitely is. It's listed. Um, but so so YouTube is a video a house, right? It's a how yeah, it's a for videos only. So you can subscribe to you can subscribe to a channel and you can know when they post something. Really? But on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Yes. What would be a channel? So you can subscribe to the Justin Bieber channel if you wanted to. You can YouTube. subscribe to the Podcam channel. Um, you could subscribe to, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of like. Sorgatron. Uh, yeah, Sorgatron. There's, you know, if you were into um, a particular food brand or a recipe, you know, so you go to chef. You go to YouTube mm -hmm. and create an account on YouTube? You don't have to create an account in order to view videos. But you do need to create an account if you want to subscribe. So if you want to subscribe to a particular YouTube account or whatever, mm -hmm. I don't know the terminology. Yep. You go to channel. YouTube. Uh, to a YouTube channel. Yep. You have to go to YouTube. Yes. And then it could. You would search for whatever you're looking for. Uh, if you really like Rachel Ray or something like that, you can search for Rachel Ray, and she has a channel. You'll find it, and you can subscribe to it. You get notified every time that she posts something new. Yep. It'll give you um, a play. The next time you log in in the upper right hand corner, it will give you a little notification. I believe you can also sign up for your email notification. So it'll email you once it comes up. And if you wanted to create, let's say, a, a listserv or something like that, that's a form of social media. It so, is. Um, it's. I don't, it, I, there are still listservs, but they're very niche. So if that makes sense for you, then that's something to explore, but I think there's better forms out there. Really? Yes. We actually, uh, I'm the, you know, one example is you have to kind of know someone to get into it, but the Southside Secrets Facebook group, mm -hmm. it's like a, literally just a very casual group of people living Southside that have somebody who work in Southside that uh, they do a really good job, maybe too good of a job sometimes, of communicating with one another. So a Facebook group, if your business is that community, building that community, then a Facebook group is an option for sure. Uh, that's where we've moved to in our civic association. It just makes more sense if you're, if that conversation is really important. And Facebook's starting to love groups again. They started to kill them for a while there, but it's coming versus, back. Versus if it were a listserv, you'd have to do like Yahoo groups or something. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it still exists. Uh, kind of a dying breed. Yeah, and there are, there really are some people who still use it. Um, yeah, that's what, I mean, but <laughs> if you're people on the street, if you walk down yes. and say, you know, hey, I have a listserv, they're going to go, oh, what? what? Yeah. But if you say, hey, are you on Facebook, yeah. they're going to be like, you know, I, I, I talked to my granddaughter on Facebook. Yeah. I'm not that young, and I've never participated in a list. So, never in my life. So, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. They're kind of cumbersome, and they're difficult. Especially when somebody responds. Oh, good. <laughs> you know, and then you get this big, long thing in return, because they don't, they don't clip it. Like, That's right. You know, they just they, they send a great or whatever. And, and everyone gets that. And everybody gets you know, so that all the mail and then people complain. And then somebody has a reply all and says, please don't <laughs> reply <laughs> all. And then please don't reply all, reply all. <laughs> no, no, see, no, I want a couple of Oh, really? Yeah. Really Maybe you should be like responsible for moving them to Facebook then. For what? Moving them to Facebook. No, but if you are from like another city, I have some back here in Pittsburgh or whatever. And I think that may be because a lot of people in that particular community may not even be on Facebook. Yep, so awesome. it opens it up to join. Anybody can join the community listserv or, or you know, or for an association I'm with, there's listserv and you can join. You can have moderated acceptance. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can be it's moderated. So that, I guess but that's you can it. choose who you're going to get into. Right, exactly. That's what it is. So what are you looking to market? Well, no, I mean, I'm just kind of picking a few different things, but, I, but again, 